Thanks, Robin. This is HLN Now. I'm Mike Alanis. All right, your jaw is going to hit the floor as this story unfolds. Here we have a young woman at home. She's all comfy. She's watching TV, and she's watching a show about cold cases and serial killers. Then her house pops onto the screen. That's when the nightmare begins. With more, here's KMOV's Chris Nagus. What did you think when you found this place? I loved it. Like, I love the house. Katrina McGaw signed the lease without worry. Her Section 8 voucher covered $810 in rent. The landlord seemed nice. No worries at all. Until a family member told her to check out a cold case documentary about serial killers airing on the A&E network. Oh, my God. Seriously, imagine if this happened to you. And then there it is, the house that I'm living in. First words out of this month. Pops up, and it's like, it's real. Whoa. Talk about sending chills down her spine. She was living in the same Ferguson house serial killer Mari Travis used as a torture chamber. The landlord even gave her the dining room table, the same one from the crime scene photos. When she showed us the house, she was like, you guys can have this table if you want. Those are the same chairs. Yeah, same chairs, same table, everything. But it's what happened downstairs that freaks her out. That's where Travis recorded some of his crimes. At one point, he sent the Post Dispatch a map to identify victim number 17. Some of the victims were tied to this pole. This whole basement was basically his torture chamber. And it's not okay. It's just too much for Maga to handle. So she called her landlord begging to get out of the lease, but the landlord wasn't sympathetic. Turns out the landlord is the suspect's mom. She said, no, you've already signed the lease. You need to stay there until your lease is up. So I called Travis's mother. She claimed she told McGaw about the house's dark past. McGaw says that's not true. She would have remembered the people murdered in the basement part. Do you feel like there should be a law that you should be told about something like I definitely this? feel there should be a law. Like, there's no way that she should get away with thinking that it's okay not to tell people what happened in this house. Although we couldn't get Travis's mom to budge, the St. Louis Housing Authority did. McGaw says she will be moving at the end of July, which can't come soon enough. So the St. Louis Housing Authority had to come to the rescue of this young woman so she's going to be able to leave the house. Joining me now, special guest of the program, as always, Mo Ivory. She's an attorney, radio host, and you've rented out some properties. Yes, absolutely. So, I've dealt with tenants. So does what does landlord have to disclose? Should that have, you, do you tell that or not? You know doggone well if you tell that. You're not renting this. Sure. Well, there exactly. So there are very um, landlord uh, tenant law is really based on states. There's a couple of federal things that have to happen, like lead disclosure and the um, the the notice that you cannot discriminate against tenants. Those kind of things that are in every lease. But by and large, leases can be done from regulations from state to state. So in St. Louis, obviously, there is no onus on the landlord to disclose what has happened in the home, whether there was a death and or... This is basic stuff here, Bob. Sure, yes. me interrupting, but length of lease, amount of rooms, that's basic stuff. Sure. That's all you pretty much have to disclose? utilities, exactly. A move-in, move-out inspection, what will happen if you end the lease early, what happens if something breaks down, the, the repair provisions, all of those things are kind of... But here's the thing. People don't read their leases. That's the right, biggest problem. Right. You, know, you, say, you say, like, well, it has to have all this stuff in it. Yeah, once someone goes in and says, oh, it's pretty on the outside, it's clean on the inside, oh, it has a basement from my flat screen, right. nobody reads the three pages of small, fine print that come after it that says if something catastrophic happens, we don't necessarily have to um, pay you back your money. We might move you to another property or things that affect people when situations like this come about. Do your homework is the theme out Do here for homework. everybody. You're going to rent or buy, obviously. Do your Do home. Google Read your search, lease. Right? Google search. She had the same last name as the killer, as her son. She didn't even change her name to protect, you know, the fact that somebody might search about her. Same last name. If she would have done a search, St. Louis Travis, she would have seen the house on Google. She would have seen the pictures of, you know, what happened at the crime scene. And then she would have known. And I, and I don't by any means want to blame her for it because she's like everybody else. Right. We don't, we don't read, we don't do fine print, all of that kind of stuff. So that's what ends up happening. But thankfully, she was enrolled in the Housing Authority program and she was obviously got this house from a yeah, listing. Yeah, because if not, she really wouldn't have had any right. recourse, right? So or the, the mother was in a deal with the Housing Authority and they were able to apply pressure to make sure that she could get out of the lease. Last one, real quick. So could she sue for damages, mental anguish, living in this house of horrors? Um, not really. Okay. I mean, she could try to. <laughs> I tried. Yeah, yeah, she, <laughs> she, tried she, could, she could try to, but I don't know how she would ever prove the real injury, you know? Yeah, interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. But still, imagine that. Oh, You're watching awful. the A&E channel, and next thing you know, hey, that's my house. Oh, it's, it's absolutely awful. Ooh, wow. Mo, thanks. You're welcome.